What's up, everybody? My name is Kevin, and I'm part of the Dino team. And for those of you who haven't used Dino before, Dino is a JavaScript runtime for the server that natively supports TypeScript without a compilation step. And one feature of TypeScript that I think is really neat that actually should be coming to a browser near you very soon is decorators. And in the next 10 minutes, I'm gonna tell you a little bit about uh, what decorators are, what you would use them for, and then show you a little bit of code that uses decorators so you can get a sense of how it works and how it might differ from similar code that you've written in the past. So let's go ahead and dive in. Uh, so we'll start off by talking about what decorators are at a high level and how they work. So decorators allow you to customize the behavior of classes in a reusable way. Now you might have already uh, sort of done this type of thing before by extending classes with um, other super classes, uh, using the prototype chain, things like that. But decorators provide a slightly different means of doing this by uh, providing ways to customize classes that are sort of agnostic from the inheritance chain that uh, a class might be using. So let's, uh, Let's consider this in the context of a simple class like this one, which is a person that has a name and then you know a instance method which greet which prints out a greeting method, excuse me, it prints out a greeting message um, to the person uh, whose name is stored in the class. So if we wanted to uh, change this change this method to uh, log out messages when we enter that function and then maybe when we exit it, which is a pattern that's reasonably common when you're adding like debug logic. Uh, you could change the code to look something like this, but that's a little nasty and you wouldn't be able to reuse it in other classes that need that same logic where you wanna print a message at the beginning of a method and then print a message uh, when the method exits. So one way you can clean that up is by implementing this logic as a decorator. And a decorator in your code is going to look, uh, look a little bit like this. So you're going to uh, prefix the decorator with an at symbol, and then uh, that's going to be actually a function call that gets invoked when your class is loaded to sort of change the behavior and functionality of the method that it's decorating uh, before it gets called for the first time. So the implementation of that uh, debug logging uh, decorator um, takes in the sort of original uh, function in this case, or the original uh, class method, uh, which can be used to call that same functionality using uh, the dot call uh, syntax that you see here, uh, which you can use on JavaScript function objects today. And it'll pass in a context object which contains information about the entity that contains that uh, contains that method. And um, using this uh, signature, you can uh, you can wrap the functionality of that uh, original method by executing some code before it, executing some code after it, and uh, doing lots of different things to possibly mutate the value that's being returned from that function, uh, or you know, take some kind of action, maybe change the visibility of data within that method call um, elsewhere in your program. And uh, what the uh, decorators can do at a high level, um, as I said, you can change uh, the decorated entity itself. So the entity being anything from like a class uh, property or a method of some kind, and you can actually change any data associated with it. You can um, replace, the, uh, replace the decorated entity entirely with something that's semantically compatible. Um, and by that, we mean uh, if you're replacing a function, you need to return a function that can be called in the same way. If you're replacing a property, you need to replace that uh, with a property that can be accessed in much the same way. Uh, so generally, you can't uh, sort of take a function and replace it with a string, say. Uh, the other thing that you can do within a decorator is expose access to data within the class outside the context of the class. So um, maybe in a browser scenario, you wanted to have some data in the window scope that you would update uh, when something happens um, in the context of a class. So uh, changing this, uh, the scope of, or the access of uh, data that's in the scope of the class is another use case for decorators. And you can also uh, kind of process the entire uh, decorated entity in some way after uh, after the, an instance of the object has been initialized. So there's uh, a hook that happens kind of after all of the um, different decorators have been called, after the instance has been created, and you can do uh, some, some amount of modification of the decorated entity after that. 
Uh, notably, uh, decorators in uh, JavaScript, at least in uh, this iteration of the decorators API, um, can only be applied to classes. So um, you can use decorators on class declarations, methods, fields, and accessors. And those accessors can also be the new uh, accessors that use the accessor keyword um, in ECMAScript. So uh, decorators as a specification is relatively new, although uh, the specification, I think it was in 2022, got to uh, stage three, which means that it's ready for implementation by browser vendors. And it hasn't uh, landed in many browsers yet, but uh, in TypeScript, uh, TypeScript generally implements stage three features of ECMAScript. So um, decorators in their current iteration are available in TypeScript 5. And in Dino, uh, uh, the stage three decorators are gonna be available in version 1.40, uh, which isn't out yet, but should be in the next couple of days. In fact, uh, when you're watching this video, it's very likely that uh, this feature will be available in Dino. So uh, be sure to check it out. So, uh, if that's what decorators are, uh, what generally would you use them for? And uh, for the most part, you'll see decorators used by framework or library authors to uh, augment the functionality of classes that you write. So this is an example of using a uh, class component decorator in the context of a Vue.js application. Uh, so you can uh, you know, take those class uh, properties and bind them to you know, templates in the, in the UI. Uh, there's also, uh, a you know state management library called uh, MobX, which is relatively popular, and it makes extensive use of of uh, decorators to uh, create like reactive state that you can use within the context of user interfaces as well. But uh, one of my favorite uh, usages of decorators doesn't actually come from the JavaScript world at all. It comes from the Python world. Uh, so Flask is a lightweight, uh, excuse me, a lightweight web framework for uh, Python, uh, very similar to uh, Express or Hono, which is a framework that we'll see here in a moment that lets you uh, declare uh, you know, routes uh, for uh, your web applications without necessarily having to change the implementation of your underlying Python functions. And uh, this, I think, is pretty neat and exposes one of the secret use cases of decorators, uh, which is keeping your, uh, your code that is unrelated to the framework uh, pretty clean and mostly having to do with data and business logic instead of, um, you know, lots of boilerplate to render HTML or JSON or something like that. So um, what I'd like to do is show you a quick demo that uh, uses decorators in a similar context. So I'm gonna create a, a sort of class-based uh, you know, extension uh, to the Hono framework, which is a lightweight web framework, again, kind of in the tradition of Express or Sinatra. And uh, we'll use decorators to kind of clean up our, our code from our route handlers a little bit um, in a way that I think is uh, generally pretty useful. So uh, let's pop out to our, uh, our text editor here. Um, so I got uh, Visual Studio Code open. And uh, this is a simple uh, Dino application that, uh, again, uses TypeScript by default. Um, so I don't have to kind of configure any tooling in order to be able to use TypeScript. And um, I've done a couple of things here. So this is kind of the entry point for my application. And um, I've created uh, two other files here. One is this Hono decorators um, .ts file, which is kind of my framework code that's going to implement uh, my decorators. And then I've also created a, a to-do resource class, which is gonna consume those decorators and uh, define some routes within my application that are actually gonna handle incoming HTTP requests. And um, over here on the right, I have an HTTP client that I can use to kind of see this in action. So um, I can you know, get uh, a list of to-do to -do items, um, and then I've implemented a couple of routes along the way. So if I you know, go visit slash to-dos, slash that ID and send that, I can get you know, a single to-do list item back. Um, so I have like a little bit of a, a lightweight uh, REST API on top of uh, to-do list items. So let's take a look at how it works. Um, we'll start with the actual sort of implementation code for the, uh, for the to-do list. And that's gonna use uh, the uh, decorators that I declared in this other file, which we'll take a look at here in a second. Um, it also, uh, for persistence, uses Dino KV, which is a key value database that's built into Dino. We won't go super deep on how KV works, but uh, each of the, uh, you know, we have a class here uh, called to-do resource, and each of these instance functions 
um, uses a decorator to declare uh, what route it handles, what HTTP verb um, it expects to handle. And within the uh, implementation of each of these functions is uh, code that's very uh, specifically scoped to just like data access. So I use the uh, Dino KV API to grab a list of items from the database. Uh, and then I just render a list or I just return a list of items in response to each of these uh, method calls. So I'm not actually doing any logic to render JSON or HTML or anything like that. Um, my logic here is mostly focused on uh, data access. And uh, within my uh, decorators file, um, this is where we see uh, the implementation of actually stage two uh, decorators, which is what you can use in Dino today without any additional configuration. Um, but again, in uh, the upcoming version of Dino, um, you can use the stage three version of this API as well. And once again, because this is an older version of the API, we won't go super deep on how these decorators are implemented. Uh, but um, I have a couple wrapper functions which um, will take a route um, and then return a decorator uh, that is set up to uh, create a Hono endpoint that handles uh, traffic to those, uh, to those URLs. And uh, one thing that I think is uh, pretty useful about decorators as an API, uh, as an API pattern, especially as a framework author, is that you can stack these decorators uh, to do multiple things. So if I uncomment this uh, template decorator and save, uh, save my server, um, now instead of generating uh, just JSON by default for my to-dos, um, I can um, you know, hit this endpoint and, excuse me, I'll hit, uh, let's go localhost 8000. And if we say uh, slash to-dos and hit send, um, now I can actually render HTML in response to that uh, to that request as well. So um, this is actually similar to a pattern that exists in Flask, where you can um, specify a template that gets rendered uh, every time a route is requested, instead of uh, just relying on the logic within the function uh, to actually find that template and uh, and render it on behalf of the of the user. So um, as a framework uh, developer, you can kind of stack these. Uh, stack these decorators together and end up with uh, a nice API that is more composable uh, versus having to have your uh, implementers uh, consume an API with multiple, uh, you know, and actually having to change the underlying implementation in order to use different uh, framework features. So that's, a, again, just a super, super fast um, introduction to decorators. Uh, I hope that uh, you can check it out again in the future. Here are some of the sources that I used in the preparation of this uh, presentation. So please uh, check those out to learn more about decorators. And once again, you can try uh, decorators in Dino 1.40, which is coming out here very, very shortly. So once again, my name is Kevin, uh, and I hope that you enjoyed learning a little bit about decorators, and I hope you use them in your own code very soon.